Hi, I'm James, and today we're going to be talking about oropharyngeal airways. This is a really helpful airway adjunct to be used in emergencies if people have an obstructed airway. I'm going to talk through the indications for use, how to size one up, and how to insert it. This is an average sized oropharyngeal airway, sometimes referred to as a Goodell airway. At the top, we have the flange that's going to sit at the entrance to the mouth, with the teeth coming down just on this reinforced bit of plastic. This natural curve helps support the tongue and keep the tongue away from the airway with the tube sitting neatly at the back of the oropharynx. It's really important to remember where that's going to sit because if you size it too large or if you have a patient with a very sensitive gag reflex, they may not tolerate this and may start coughing or even vomiting, which is going to jeopardize the airway. It's really helpful to understand exactly where this sits when it's in position. So the oropharyngeal airway will sit like that over the top of the tongue with the flange in between the teeth and the lips. And then at the back you can see where the distal end of the tube sits just above the larynx, meaning that there's going to be no obstruction of the larynx if this is sat in the right place. Just to make that even clearer, It will sit like that. This is the larynx down here. So it's going to provide unobstructed passage of air from outside down into the trachea and then into the lungs. The best indication for using an oropharyngeal airway is if you have a patient who is unconscious. Because of where this sits in the airway, this hard plastic bit at the back is going to sit on the oropharynx. So if you have someone who's awake enough to have a gag reflex, they aren't going to tolerate this going in. If the patient isn't tolerating this, then a nasopharyngeal airway is also a good option. When sizing an oropharyngeal airway, it's important to make sure that it's going to fit correctly with the patient you have in front of you. You want to line the flange up with the patient's incisors, and then follow the curve round so the tip of the airway will sit roughly where the mandible is. So this looks like it will be about the right size. If I've tried this airway, it already looks like it may be too big, but I can check lining the flange up with the incisors and the tip of the airway is a long way from the angle of the mandible. So this is going to be too big and potentially would cause problems with the patient's gag reflex or cause them to vomit. Insertion of an oropharyngeal airway, I'm going to size it up first. So I want the flange roughly level with the incisors and then the curve will finish approximately at the angle of the mandible. So this is going to be about the right size. When I put the oropharyngeal airway in, I'm going to gently tilt the head slightly. I'm going to insert this upside down to start with. I'm just letting it drop into the mouth. And once it won't go any further, a gentle twist of 180 degrees. And then you can see on this model how it sits neatly with the tip at the edge of the oropharynx and the curve is following the shape of the tongue but keeping the tongue out of the way from obstructing the airway. Once the gadel is in place, we may still need to do simple airway opening manoeuvres to make sure the airway is patent. This could be a head tilt or more likely a little jaw thrust just to make sure the gadel is sitting neatly in place. Once the airway is secured, we can add in oxygen if the patient requires it. As the patient begins to regain consciousness, we may make the decision to remove the oropharyngeal airway. We want to avoid them coughing or gagging on the tube too much, so if we get the sense they can maintain their own airway, we'll just gently pull it out following the curve of the tube itself. In an infant, because they have different airway anatomy, it's important just to demonstrate how we put the oropharyngeal airway in in a slightly different manner. So with the head in the neutral position, I'm going to use a tongue depressor just to gently press the tongue down. And then I'm going to insert the oropharyngeal airway in the same orientation that it's going to end up. So different from how we put it in, in adults. Gently pushing directly down removing the tongue depressor and it will sit in the same way as adults like that.